is the best of, of a bunch. bunch. Yeah. Yep. Um, but they, they 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 need a, a, a new defence. I mean, Man United. I know it was probably a right time to get rid of Ferdinand and Vidic, but they haven't replaced them. Uh, they're I, looking looking for guys to step up, and they're just not going to do it. I, I, I that was the point I was going to make to Kieran. You know, he, he did lose three players in Evra, Ferdinand, and Vidic, but I think it was time for all of them to go. Um, why Juventus bought Evra? Baffling, um, but we can get to that in a minute. Uh, Louis, um, thoughts on the kind of Manchester United? I mean, you you, you saw the highlights. Uh, no, I didn't. Um, well, I, I I seen a couple uh, a couple of the goals, but um, feel free to shoot me down. You probably will, but I kind of think there's similarities between what's happening in Man U and what's happening at Celtic. Van Hals came in. He had to. Uh, Rejuvenate the team. He's got to kind of totally redevelop the team. He's he's also trying to change the playing style. He's changing things off the pitch. All these things Dyla is also doing. Um, I think he's he's bought certainly bought a lot of attacking players. Again, appeased the fans. As I, I think a certain part of that uh, impressed them with attacking talent. Hope to to hurt teams in an attacking sense and possibly forego the defensive uh, restructuring until January or maybe next summer. Yeah. Um, and it's it's always going to be difficult during this kind of transitional period. Um, I'd agree they do pretty much need a new defence. Uh, and again, I think similar to Celtic, they don't have any leaders. There's no, uh, they've they've been stripped away of so many of the the players that have been there for so many years and know what it's like to, to play for Man U, to win for Man U, and and bring other players along. Yes, it's great having Ryan Giggs as your assistant manager, but he's not on the pitch helping you manage a game as a youngster. I mean, the, the likes of Blackett and, and even uh, Smallin and Jones, fair enough, Smallin and Jones have played a lot of games, but they were playing again uh, alongside the likes of Rio Th- Ferdinand, Evra, um, Giggs. They had these players that would help them out, just like we've been saying about how um, having Brown alongside like Johansson, it helps them. Yeah. And Man, you need those players. And the fact that like Bidic, Evra, these players have all left, it it does to me. It makes them look a bit um, fragile in a sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the, the players have got are fantastic. They're amazing. But trying to shoehorn, I mean, he's got to shoehorn them into the side now. It's just going to take time, and he he deserves the time, and I think it will work in the end. But it's just going to be rocky for, the, for this season. I think it's. I think it would be surprising if they got Champions League football. I, I think um, you know. I, I, I think Gary Lineker said it as well. Like, the, if you want to be the man, a United manager, you want to be the man after the man who replaces Ferguson, and it's kind of you know, not really working out that way either because he's he's a turd as well. I despise Louis Van Gaal. I don't think he's a very good manager. I think he was a good manager when he, in nineteen ninety. He's not not nineteen ninety, but you know ninety five. But you know rubbish. Anyway, so Liverpool, uh, they're also doing pretty terribly. Um, they were terrible against um, West Ham. But what fu- a funny thing happened because Mario Balotelli yesterday put on Twitter Man United dot 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 lol, <laughs> which <laughs> was quite, which I just thought was genius. Um, typical Mario. It was, uh, and anyone does why always him, but <laughs> uh, it's, it was uh, it was an easy one for me. I mean, it's not going to upset his former English club or his current English club. So, uh, of course, I think the, we're just the league in general now. I mean, already it looks pretty much on on set for Chelsea. Yeah. I mean, their City have dropped seven points already. Yeah, two draws and defeat Liverpool are languishing quite far behind. Liverpool Arsenal are, are li- struggling a wee bit. Liverpool are a point ahead of Man United with the same amount of games played. So and they've just had two defeats in the the bounce there as well. Yeah. So it's I mean. Chelsea were doing well up until obviously they get in a draw with City. But I mean, get a draw at the Etihad is, isn't nothing to sniff at. Chris, you covered the Spanish league. Are you surprised how well Costa started? Um, n- no. Well, 
Maybe, actually. I'll be perfectly honest. I mean, last season was his breakthrough season at Atletico. He had to play second fiddle to Phil Cowell the year, be- uh, year before. He had a fantastic campaign last year, and I, I, I knew how talented he was. But there's always that doubt in your mind, you know, is he going to be able to take that step up? Um, I knew he had the ability, but, you know, change a, change a style of football, change a country and stuff like that. But he's been fantastic. He's the top player and top striker, obviously, in England just now. I mean, there's Focal's obviously at Man United, and we, we, all, we all know how good he can be. Obviously, his injuries put a question mark if he's going to hit that level. But I'm not surprised that Costa's done this. Um, be, well, I'm just contradicting myself. <laughs> right? and I said I was a bit... But I, I knew he had, he had the talent to do it, and he's, he's fantastic. Would he's you give a lot of praise to Fabregas? Fabregas is set up... I don't know, but three quarters yeah, of these goals. Like six assists, apparently. Yeah. Fantastic. So and you've got to give um, Mourinho credit there because he came out and said, I'm going to set this team up to get the best out of Fabregas, and he has. Chelsea look fantastic this season. I've n- never liked Fabregas. I've never been shy about saying how much I dislike the guy, but he's a, he's a great player. I, mean, I think Mourinho deserves all the, pr- the praise in the world at this point for the fact that he's he came in last year and he, he was right to dispel their, their kind of title credentials. But he knew exactly what that team needed, how he could... He obviously had the means to get it, but he knew what they needed to sit mount a serious challenge this year. I think he's played it brilliantly. Getting Matic, Matic is... How they let go for about four million quid. I know, that's, I, I know but the, the, the fact that they, Chelsea up. they sold... Uh, David Luiz for fifty million, getting him back for twenty million, he's a far better player than what they when they let him go. Fair enough, it's costly, but at the same time, he's he's been proven absolutely right to bring him in. Yeah, uh, uh, Chelsea have now not only are looking good in terms of you know when they're at Stamford Bridge, obviously the Schalke game was a bit of a. Um, well, I was going to say that, and I've actually seen it. That so after saying that, they then go and drop points at home. Uh, they should have. They should. They should have been. League. They should, they're still very good, right? <laughs> they, they, that's a great point. Like. Uh, they still should. They should still should have beat Schalke. I, Drogba missed about three or four big opportunities. Opportunities he probably would have met, um, scored. You know when he was at Chelsea the first time. So I don't think that's too much to, to worry about from a Chelsea point of view. But they're you know the game yesterday, Man City. He had all the possession. Man City dominated at times, um, and Chelsea still took the lead. And you know, if it wasn't for that Frank Lampard goal, probably would have won. But that, that was Mourinho's tactics last year right, against uh, in these big games, especially against City. It wasn't to to try and match them and and um, try and dominate the game. It was to to play the other way, try and suck them in, get the goals, and and play it, change your style, but. He manages these games so well. And yet, how many teams did he vilify for coming to Stamford Bridge and sitting in and playing what he would class negative football? Aye, parking the bus. Yeah. It's funny because he Pellegrini came out and said that um, Chelsea played like a small team um, during and criticised their defensive style. Uh, I think we played 90 minutes against a small team trying to defend. I would not be happy to play that way. Um, Seems a bit better. I thought, just they, I thought they cancelled each other out. I don't, I don't think Man City were particularly. Um, I Man City were particularly threatening as well. I think they tried to stifle a lot of Chelsea's attacking players as well. Yeah, I think they did just kind of hold each other. Everton lost to um, Palace, which is quite a surprise. Um, is their bubble burst? Did they push this season? I'm talking about Everton. Aye. Yeah. Everton, they've only got five points. You're not being impressed? I've, I've been quite impressed with how, with how they've played. Aye, at times, I mean, the Arsenal game, I think you're, you're talking uh, about. Yeah, the Arsenal game and, uh, yeah. They were good in the Arsenal game, but they, I, I don't think... I, I think they get away with a lot, Martin is, because of the way he approaches the game. Remember they, remember they did one in Europe during the week, 4-1. Aye, against right, 4-1 one against Wolfsburg team. Wolfsburg. Too, yeah. and I think that's the thing, they're quite temperamental, and Martinez gets away with it, because when they're good, they're very good, and they look, they're, they're enjoyable to watch. But a lot of the times they, they, they drop you know, easy points, and I think... Other managers would get criticised for it, where he doesn't. Yeah, I think. But I, agree I, with that, actually. I think that's one thing. I seen uh, Brendan Rodgers is, is came out and said how the the fact that they're in Europe is disrupting their routine. So it's, it's an extra focus, and instead of embracing it, he's almost using a using it as an excuse for their poor performance in the league or whatever. But it is. 
that way where they have had the luxury of playing at the weekend and having more or less the week to prepare for the next game. Everton are similar. Now they're they're in Europe and wanting to do something in Europe. It's a different focus on them. Yeah. They have less time to prepare for these games. I think it will take a while to adapt for both of them. They can't, they can't really blame it as well in Europe because if you look at all the clubs, British clubs during the week that played in Europe, only Arsenal won. Everybody else dropped points, including, I think, Spurs get beat. They got beat by West Brom. Yeah, they did. They lost one now, which was... And it was that White Hart Lane. Yeah. I, d- I just want you to see this. Uh, Frank, Ra- um, Frank Lampard scoring, and Mourinho came out um, and said, when a, when a player decides to go to a direct com- competitor, then the love stories are over. <laughs> just, the love story is over. What a dick. Um, but <laughs> that's just... Thing. Uh, Chris, uh, well, just any other kind of points you want to make about the, the Premier League this weekend or just in general? The Bushies out for, for... I think it's been quite an exciting start. I mean, it's quite open. A lot of, a lot of teams, apart from Chelsea, no other teams really putting a good run together. Southampton have. And Wanyama uh, scored at the weekend. He one. did. Wanyama did score at the weekend. Um, Lennon, Neil Lennon was on um, match of the day and he was, you know, uh, as he should, giving him props about how better he can become. He's only 21. Is he? 21. That's what, was a bit older than that. That's what Lennon said at the, uh, the weekend. Um, but, you, you know, the guy's got the potential to legitimately be fantastic. But he's not getting in the Southampton did team. You, just, um, just as a joke, did you see the first yellow card for that uh, Wilfred Boney? When he was going towards the guy, he was just screaming. screaming. He just his <laughs> eyes opened, his mouth, and looked like he was just screaming. I'm going to kill you. Assault him. I know, it's crazy. Uh, I think someone, I think someone actually day put out the comment, he was growling, uh, growling as he went for the challenge. Um the, Aston Villa, Lambert signs that deal and then they get absolutely annihilated by Arsenal. That was funny. Um, obviously, Le- Leicester beating Man United 5-2 is pretty incredible. Uh, you watched, Chris, you watched the Juventus-AC Milan game uh, a few years ago. It would have been a huge game nowadays. It's more of a an annoyance in terms of you know what Milan are actually doing at the point. What do you think of it? Um, it wasn't much of a spectacle. It um, wasn't particularly entertaining to watch. Um, Milan are in the doldrums they're, they've got a handful of decent players the rest of them are fairly average um, I know I keep saying it but the fact that Montari starts in midfield for them just absolutely astounds me well it doesn't astound me because they don't have anybody else but the, the fact that a guy who's as completely average as he is is a first pick for Milan is just, just sums up where they are just now Yeah, Juventus um they do. I've I've said it, and I know I'm not a big Juventus fan. Has been said, but they they don't lack the drive that they they don't seem to have the same drive that they did under Conte. Um, do you think that's down to Vidal being missing? I do. I, I was going to come to that. I do think Vidal's a <laughs> Vidal. Vidal's a big loss for them. <clears throat> At the same time, there's just something I'm just sensing that the team don't seem the same. I think Conte's a huge, huge loss. I think that you know during this the, the transfer window there the. the the focus was on keeping guys like Pogba, Pogba yeah. Vidal uh, at the club, and they've done remarkably well doing that. Um, but I think Conte was a big part of the, the, their success, and I think they're going to miss him. And in saying that as well, I think that Roma this season look as if they've got stronger as well. So it could be that Juventus may have dipped back a bit, and Roma have, have moved forward. So at the very least, we're going to see a reduction in the gap, I think. Um, I think what could hold Roma back a little bit is their defence. Well, they've lost Benatia, who's a who's a huge loss for them. But um, they they don't look particularly um, weak there. They don't they don't look as if that they, they've really poor at the back just now. Um, and I do think that their midfield is every bit as good as Juventus's is, which is where I think Juventus have won the league for the last three years. Yeah, I agree and, with I, that. and I think that. Roma's midfield's fantastic as well, and then Golan, um, De Rossi, Pjanic, um, these, that's a really, really talented midfield, Strutman as well, obviously, it's a really strong midfield, and I think it's more than capable of matching Juventus. Why did Nangala not go to the World Cup? I don't know, I spoke to, I think I spoke to Marek about that in, in the, the past as well, he's exactly what Belgium needed, I think, um, I think they've got a lot of tippy-tappy players, but he's quite a 
you know, an all action tough kind of guy. You know, yeah. who, who would an all rounder. Yep, he would have added a bit of steel to that midfield. I think perhaps he'd only made the move to Roma in in, um, in January last year, so perhaps he wasn't in the. Mid-